Hi guys, wow, just wow. Rupert Murdoch's talk TV host Richard Tice and Isabel Oakshot, who I believe are a couple, got more than they bargained for when they invited on former Deputy Prime Minister Lord Heseltine. Michael here tore the Brexiteers a new one by holding up examples of how Brexit is both damaging to the UK economy and how even Brexiteers are going to war with fellow Brexiteers. This was epic. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Have a listen. Did you see today's Teletelegraph? Brexit is dead. Uh, yes, I did. That was and an article. And those are your most fanatical supporters. Uh, so that's right. how, how can your greatest supporters allow this sort of adverse propaganda Which be published? Was that? that was so. That I mean, was that uh, was the that editor. Was article, was, uh, this Lord, was, that was an article by this Sarah Jacobs, Lord Telegraph. But the, the point is, what she was concerned oh, okay. about well, look, is that okay. the establishment let's, figures. Let's, let's start again. What about this one? The Bank of England. People a thousand pounds worse off. The Daily Telegraph. It's not me. It's your friends. Uh, <laughs> the, the reality is that our GDP growth. Since no, the reality. The I've just told you what the reality is. I've just told you what the reality is. No, the reality is the figures. Lord trying to delude the people show. as you've been doing for six years. How can you dare? To say that it's only two years or four years, the referendum was because that's in a question like of fact, Lord it's only two years nearly the seven end of the years ago, and the people who were in charge in the government of the day, Boris Johnson, Liam Fox, David Davis, did you think they knew what they were doing? Two years before we had a general election, then we were told we'd get Brexit done. Why now? Are we still waiting to know what that means? I'll tell you why. Because it meant. A pack of lies. Well, uh, Lord Hesseltine, let me tell you why. The reason that we're in the position we are is because Remainers such as yourself worked very, very hard to thwart Brexit ever happening. So you can recite the many years <laughs> since 2016 come thing, on, but come we've on. had no time you to know actually make it work. Well. You've had six years with your hands on the levers of power. Well, we'd love to have had six years. Don't tell we'd me love it's people like that. me or civil servants. Um, OK, what, what, Lord Heseltine, what, bear with us a second. What are doing? What the fuck? Like, what, what did they expect when they invited on somebody who actually understands Brexit? Somebody who can see through the crap. <laughs> Wonderful. I love this guy. Um, and he's co completely correct. Boris Johnson um, and the others that he mentioned, they're the ones who had their hands on the levers of power. And this idea that, well, Brexit only happened uh, two years ago. No, Brexit ha happened in 2016. The UK didn't leave the EU until two years ago. But as soon as Brexit happened, we saw what happened to the pound. We saw what happened to investment, foreign investment into the UK collapsed. It's not completely gone, but it collapsed because of Brexit, because businesses understood, OK, the UK is leaving. We don't know what sort of deal they're going to have with the EU, but it's going to be worse than being a member of the European Union. So that had an impact. And of course, less investment means less jobs and a more difficult uh, situation when it comes to the economy. And the fact that he held up the Telegraph, the Tory graph, as I sometimes call it, pro-Brexit newspaper, saying Brexit is dead, and um, how the Bank of England has said that peop ordinary people are £1,000 worse off because of Brexit. Like, if the, the Brexit-backing Telegraph is telling you this, how do you turn around and say, well, it's, 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 it's your fault, Lord Esseltine? <laughs> He's not an MP. He's a member of the House of Lords. How did he stop Brexit? Was he anti-Brexit? Of course he was. He understood the damage it would, do, it would do. And he did whatever he could to try and stop it. But he had no power. Was he able to stop it? Of course he couldn't. The likes of the ERG wanted a harder Brexit. They wanted businesses to be in a worse situation than they are today. They wanted the British economy to be in a worse situation than it is today as well. Can you imagine if they had got their way? This, <laughs> once again, uh, you know, holding up a mirror to these people and explaining that you were the ones who were in charge. You can't turn around now and blame somebody else. And that's what they're doing. 
It's about blaming somebody else. Blaming, oh, well, Brexit isn't a success because it wasn't implemented correctly. Or Brexit wasn't a success because of Theresa May. Or because people who didn't believe in it enough. And this is what's going to happen going forward. You're going to hear continually in the media how Brexit could have been a success if the right people were in charge. So what needs to happen is you need to vote for the Reform Party or whatever, um, which Richard Tice is um, leader of, I think, at the moment anyway. And he's going to say, you know, if you vote for us, you get a proper Brexit, not this half-arsed Brexit that the Tories delivered. Wonderful. <laughs> well said, Lord Helsetine. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.